Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. And I'm so excited. We're going to have a conversation with artist Gail Moore. Gail Moore is a gifted artist. She is an accomplished pianist, singer, songwriter, author, and producer. Her efforts have had highlights from singing background from the pop of Michael Jackson for the king of pop, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, B.B. Winans, Donna Summers, and, and the list goes on. We're going to have a fun time today here. We're going to talk about music, books, football, Just Girls, swag. Gail Moore, welcome to Sister Power. Thank you, Sharon. I love you. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to talk about all of that. All right. <laughs> and there's a lot to talk about. So let's just get right to it. Yes. Because you have done some phenomenal, wonderful, exciting things in your life. And so just tell us, a, just give us a snapshot of, about you. Well, I mean, my, my, my name, of course, is Gail Moore, but I'm from California, born and raised. I was raised very strict Pentecostal. And um, my mom was a very entrepreneur type mother. She made sure that everything was right. And she always stayed on me to make sure you stayed on that piano. Sometimes she'd drive up in the driveway, you know, back in the day, and, and we'd be outside playing. She'd look, she'd look at me and say, hey, you get in the house, get back on the piano. And she didn't know I'd been on there all day because I loved it that much. But the more I played it, the more I loved it. She actually introduced me to all of that. My mother was a very talented lady. She was the music director of our church. So I saw her always in the front and really doing her thing. She could really work that music, the organ, the guitar, the, the, the piano, everything. And so I took all of that, all of those learnings from her. So she is my queen. <laughs> You know, we have something in common. Really? I'm a PK. You're no a PK. kidding. Get yes. out of here. I'm a PK. My mother played the piano. I played the piano, but you know, not like that. My first queen that I've met. My father, <laughs> you said you're from a strict uh, Pentecostal. Pentecostal, very, very strict. Yeah. Very strict. Seventh day Adventist. Whoa, they're yeah, strict. You can't too. get any stricter than that. No, no, they're they're pretty much locked in there. Everything you did, and I know you already know this, everything you did was wrong, was sin. You <laughs> look to the left, you're wrong. You look to the right, you're wrong. It just so we lived under that shield all the time. But it it did give us a, a solid foundation of right and wrong and respect respecting godly uh mannerism and that kind of thing so it, it was okay today at this age i i totally would uh appreciate it i do yeah i i think the important we used to say well can we breathe <laughs> no I, I couldn't dance i couldn't go to the movies I, but anyway well, we could not go to the movies no one time we snuck to the movies I mean, I oh my goodness lily my mother's name was lily was lily found out that we were at the movies honey you already know what happened right we got the spanking of our life yeah, you know, which is something that doesn't happen to children nowadays, and it should, in my opinion. But yeah, anyway, they must, they <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> so you know, you are the founder, and we're going to come back to your music. But this is so interesting to Sister Para and Sisters and Para of IE. You are the founder and CEO of Yes I Can. What is Yes I Can? Tell us about it. Yes I Can is my love. It's my love. It's it was God given. And to, to me and my husband, um, it's an organization where we use the platform of sports. My husband's a former NFL player and contemporary music. And we use that platform to help kids and families in crisis internationally. That's pretty much what it is. So we travel all around the world, uh, encouraging, inspiring, you know, making help, talking to kids about choices because we all know choices, that's where your power is. Yeah, you know, along with your husband, Art Moore, yeah. a former NFL New England Patriots, for all the, you know, fans out there, you know, that both of you have come together to empower and motivate and educate. Um, yes, I can. So you have conferences and, and, oh, and yes, how's that involved with Yes, I Can and Just Girls? 
Yes, actually, Just Girls is, falls up under the umbrella of Yes, I Can. Yes, I Can. We have all types of events. We have three-on-three -three basketball tournaments um, where we get all the kids off of the street. And they all, because, you know, our kids, they love, inner city kids, they love basketball. That thing, actually, the first time we had, we had it, we've always had to turn teams away. We, had, we, would, we would have over 150 teams to sign up. So it was a big deal. And we had it on the LSU campus in uh, Baton Rouge, California. And it was a hot, hot deal. We never had an incident. We were, these were all inner city gangbangers, rappers, the whole nine. But they would come. We never had one incident on one child the whole time they were there. And this was like junior high, I think, all the way to uh, 20, 30-year-old people that were wanting to play basketball. We even had girl teams showing up, honey. They were playing hard. They weren't playing. They were playing very hard. When they when they're getting and then we had a, a slam dunk contest, so we would do that, and then we would we would speak in so many schools that when we got through, we'd have a school assembly because that was the way we went into the schools to introduce yes I can to the school. We would um, girls would be lined up to talk to me after it was over, and guys would be lined up to talk to my husband. So when I saw that long line, I thought it just hit me. These girls, the the, the questions that they're asking me needs more time. Because they'd be like, I'm 14 and my mother's boyfriend was living with me and now I'm going with him. Should I get married? I'm like, sweetheart, there's a whole lot more to that subject right there. Well, you can't just answer that like that. So that's where I got the idea to do just girls. And it was just for girls where they could come and vent their frustrations, get real answers for the real problems that they deal with every day. Uh, that's good to hear. You know, with the times that's going on right now, how has the pandemic affected just girls? Oh my God, honey, the pandemic. Yeah. The pandemic is a devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> we've had what we're doing now, we're transitioning to a Zoom thing. We're yeah. doing everything virtual, and everybody, of course, will be on a monitor, but we're going to still, I'm caught, what I'm doing is what's called a chatterbox, and they can call in like I'm calling in now with you, and they can talk and still vent their frustrations. And people, because people don't realize what th that age group goes through. They don't get a nice, warm jacuzzi tub before they go to school in the morning, you know, before they go to bed at night. They don't get a nice, warm place, and it's very loud in their homes. So the Just Girls would really take care of all that for them. Yeah, I took all that into consideration when they came to, I'm just, I just, I just praise them for even coming to school, you know? So I didn't want to stop the Just Girls because we did it live and it was packed. 2,000 girls would be there. So now we're transitioning into doing it uh, uh, virtually and, and it's, it's coming together. It's coming together very nicely. Okay. Well, Sisters in Park Hawaii, and just girls, let's do something later on with that. You yes, know? yes, Absolutely. we need to do that. Yeah. It'll be great. Well, let's talk about your music. I mean, you have been, <laughs> ooh, we, ooh, we singing with background with Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston. And so, do you write your own songs? I do. I've actually I've written every single song I've ever recorded. Yes. <gasps> so I, I, I believe I wrote swag. Swag will even crossed over to the jazz charts. Um, it's just, God is just, he's been good to me. He's been good to me. Music is my passion as, as chill, as young, as youth is my passion as well. So let's go back. You know, we're here in Honolulu, Hawaii, and Swag is about our first Black president, Barack Obama, who was here uh, yeah. with his lovely wife as she celebrated her birthday here in, in Honolulu. Tell us about swag on your YouTube. It was a tribute to Barack Obama. Why? Well, because you know, actually, when I first when I first wrote the song and decided to do it as a video, um, I thought I would just use the Michael Jordans and my husband, who's got all the swag in the world, you know, being an NFL player, and use different celebrities. But then we were driving, we were traveling one day, and the radio was on. That was when Barack was. Gonna, I think it was running for a second term and the radio was on. My husband was just driving the car and he goes, wow, they said something really positive about Barack. And my husband goes, man, that Barack is something else. He didn't swag them again. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I'm going to use for swag. That is exactly where that idea came from. I said, when I get home, I'm going to make Obama the, 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 the uh, star of that video. 
And that was because he is the first black president of the United States, something that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. So that I felt like it, it was due some praise. And uh, we it also has been a great tool to use in the schools with the young men, the young girls, so they gives them something to look forward to. The person that you're sitting next to, you if you knew where they were going to be, you would be asking for the autograph right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's an inspiration to them. Barack being the first black president of the United States. I had to do a tribute to him. I love that. You know, today on Facebook, all of my pictures showed up from the second inauguration. And it was so good to see that and, 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 and the smiles and the warmth and the pride that we had, we being African-Americans. And, mm -hmm. and it was just a huge affair to really? be there. And, wow. and when you were saying that no one, you know, you're talking, we we're talking about your girls and mm -hmm. yes, I can. And you said not one incident. The same thing happened for both inaugurations. There was not one incident that happened at all. Yes. It was all positive. I think uh, the Lord just blesses it like, like that. You know, I thought when, when Obama ran and he, and he won the first, not first time, the second time, when he won the first time, I was just so happy. I was elated in it, but it didn't seem like the world was feeling the way I was feeling. It just seemed like it was kind of quiet the next day. You know, I was like, wow, is this enough? I mean, we got first, the first black president of the United States. I just thought that was so special. So I was very proud to, to uh, do a tribute to him. So Gail, what's new for you in 2022? Well, we just have released a new song called I Believe. Woo! And we're going to hear that later. Yeah. Oh, you got to You got to hear that one. I, I mean, I and me, me and uh, I worked and had an opportunity to work alongside with Michael London. Who oh, yes. Yeah. I talked to Michael. Damn. Yeah. He, he loves you. He loves you. He does. <laughs> Love him, too. We, he's so busy. He was supposed to be on with you, but we'll get him next time. Go ahead. Yeah, we got to come on together because I've done so yeah. many interviews. And then they also go, well, we'll get Michael on later. But I really would like them to come on because the way that I met Michael was a, a radio host allowed me to host his their show, something I had never done before. That's what got me into radio because I didn't know anything about it. And I was to interview Michael London. And he get after I it, when I met him, we just we clicked right then. As soon as the interview was over, he called me right then. He's like, "Hey, we need to do a gospel tune." And I was like, "Hey, I'm good. That's my that is my roots is gospel." So that's when we wrote, sit down and wrote, um, "I believe." Lovely. What's your passion? You have, uh, you have so many things going on. What are the passions? Well, you know, I have a passion for music. I have a passion for love. My passion is to inspire and encourage other people. I have a big heart for anybody who is hurting. That is my true passion. That's who I am. That's for being a PK, you know. That's, that's a PK, PK thing. <laughs> that kind of takes you back to the PK. It does. But that's, I really learned, uh, I have a heart. Even when I was a little girl, I would, before my parents would put me to bed, I, I'd get up and walk in these dark halls down to my daddy's room and, and cry. And he'd say, baby, what's wrong? And I'd say, I, what about all the other kids in the world who don't have any food? And he'd say, oh, sweetheart, don't worry about them. Just pray for them and thank God you have food, you know? I always had a, just a big heart for anybody. Like when it rains, like right now it's raining in Atlanta and they have homeless people everywhere. I see them and my heart breaks. That's my passion really, is just loving on other people, helping other people. That's why I did the Just Girls and that's why I love the song I Believe and the Promises. Um, that's just really who I am. That's just what I do, you know, and I love doing it. I really do. Yeah, it, it just makes you feel so good when you give back, even if it's kind words to one another. You know, uh, people, when the people come here, they say, how oh, so many people just know you in this grocery store because I speak to them. I yes. ask them how their day, tell me about your day. Yeah. Me, what happened to you today? And, and that, that, that's, that's the pa you that's that passion. Yeah, that's the passion. I'm just interested in knowing what is going on in another person's life. I just want to know, like, like you said, I just want to know, tell me how your day is. What, what do you do? Where do you live? You know, I just want to know. It's just a, I'm a people person at 100%, 100%. Yeah. My nickname here is the connector. 
Yeah. Oh, that's a good name for you. That's a good name. I like that. So back to your music, which, you know, they have said that your voice is like the queen of soul. I mean, that is just a humongous compliment. What female artist inspires you and why? Um, I would have to first say Aretha Franklin. However, I never knew that it would ever be compared to her vocally because what I admire most about Aretha Franklin is the way that she, when she sings, the way that she makes you feel. So people go back to her because the way, the way she, when she sings, you feel something mm. and it's so positive. It's so uplifting. It's so, it's so out of this world. It's some, it's on another level somewhere spiritually. That's what I admire so much about Aretha. Diana Ross, I admired her for her look. She had this fabulous fashion. She was very ladylike. She was standing, you know, and I'm not dissing any of the, the younger artists today, but those ladies were respectful to me. They, they kept their posture, you know, and they didn't do anything. They, they knew, they stayed, they knew how to stay in their lane and just work their lane on their journey, you know? So class, are these the, class. what can we use the word again? Class you know what I'm saying? And grace. I mean, classes, that, that is, that's AA, that's A plus A, it is, class. Yeah. We don't see a whole lot of that today, but that's just a, a thing that I admire uh, with Aretha Franklin and I'm glad, and Gladys not as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then I'm, I'm old school, but I love, I love Mary J and all these other young artists, Janet Jackson. I love, I love, I love everybody. I love all the country Western people, you know, I love it all. That's yeah. why I was really glad when I met Michael and he was open because most producers, they want to do a secular tune with me, you know, because they don't understand my roots, but my love and my passion is really giving God all the glory and praise that he deserves. You know what I'm saying? That's really what I love doing. And that's why I do it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your bestseller. Chosen. Oh my gosh. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to get all this in that you do. So wonderful. Well, uh, that book uh, came around, you know, first of all, I never thought I would ever write a book when I, when they, they called me and said, hey, we would like to publish a book for you, all, all, everything paid in full. And I was like, I don't write books. I write music. I really don't know what you're talking about. Um, and and the, uh, the publisher was like, yes, Gail, I've spent time with you. I've heard your music. You do have a book inside of you. She said, I just want you to take a minute to sit down, get quiet, and think about it. I did. I did that for a couple of days and called him back and said, you know, well, I talked to my husband about it. He's a very big encourager for me. Uh, he's like my biggest fan, even though he has fans all over the nation as a, as a former uh, uh, New England Patriot nose guard. But he's my biggest fan. He encouraged me and says, oh, yeah, girl, you need to sit down and write that book. And that's how I came up uh, with the, the Put It On Pause. Because you know, now that's going on. Yeah, that's going on, Chosen. And people can purchase the book, Amazon and- They can else? get it on, on any of the um, digital outlets, but they can get it on, on Amazon. They can get it from Yes, I Can. Um, they can go to my website, my, my artist website. They can get it there. Um, you, they'll really enjoy the book because it has so many uh, awesome stories in that book that are going to just flip your world upside down with inspi inspiration. Really, the book is really a great book. Good. Well, we're going to show your website too. But you know something that you said earlier about um, you know your your husband being your biggest fan, which my husband is. But and I listen to the the young ladies and they're saying, I want this and I want money and I. And, and, and they don't know, understand the importance of your husband being your best friend. Oh, my God. You know what? That's one of the biggest blessings God gave me was my, my best friend. I married my best friend. We still talk for hours today, and we've been married for 42 years. Girl, you look 40. That's a record. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you get a good man, he's going to make you look I always tell my son the same thing when you go with a lady don't leave her looking in shabs she should be feeling great don't leave her pregnant don't leave her unhappy do do well by her because we let's let's face it we make our husbands look good absolutely <laughs> absolutely you know but my husband is my queen. best friend. king and yes 
Yes, it's King and Queen. And you know, it's funny you said that because when he was playing ball, his name was King Arthur. All of his all his football buddies, they called him King Arthur. And so now we tease each other by saying he calls me Queen. He has even Queen on his phone when I ring. When I when he gets a call from me, he comes up Queen Gail and I have King Arthur. <laughs> I love that. You know, gosh, when I was um, when we spoke earlier, you know, over the phone and all the things you're doing and and this human sex trafficking okay. that yeah. you are also working with. What are human sex trafficking statistics? Oh my God, the statistics. There's 50,000 people that are abducted from the United States every year. And 51% of those are children, starting at the age of as, as babies, one, two, three, four, all the way up. Every single year, that's just here in the United States. And these kids are, are they're being abducted. They're the same kids that we work with in the high schools because they those are the targets. Those are the kids that they target, kids that are low income, who perhaps don't have a place to stay. Um, they're isolated. They don't have a lot of uh, self-esteem. They target them that way. They, they target them in places like sh shelters and stuff like that, you know? Mm. They don't even understand that they're being targeted. That's how smooth these human traffickers are. That's why we have to get the word out to end the demand on human sex trafficking across this nation. So tell us, how do the pimps lure their victims? Well, you know, they take them, they meet them at certain places. They target them like if they're in a shelter somewhere. They, they visit those places. In the streets, they know when they're there all, every day, every night, there's nobody looking after them. That's a target for them. So to the mothers, if you're, to, for these mothers, they need to understand, you need to always really know where your children is. I know that's old school, but you need to know where your daughter is because these guys are everywhere. And they're, and they're also on the internet. Yeah. And yeah. They're and on people, the internet. Mothers and fathers are losing their children from the internet with from this the opioid. internet. So you cannot it's be a scary nosy thing. With, your, with your children. You cannot be no. too nosy with them. You can't Save be too them. nosy. Yeah, you, if you love them, you need to check that internet all the time because the, the organization that we're, that we're uh, parenting with, uh, partnering with, I'm sorry, uh, the president of that organization, her daughter was human trafficked by the, on, on the internet. So it definitely happens. They lure them in that way. They, they tell them they're gonna make money. They tell them how beautiful they're all. They have a very smooth jargon that they use to influence these kids and the kids. And then they invite them, you know, since I, was, I, was, I, we, I met you at McDonald's, I paid for all your food. You know, I got some friends I want you to meet. They take them over their friends. When they get over there, you'll never see them again. That's where they, they're, they're abducted because that's where all the other human traffickers are. That child, does not know that. She just thinks this guy is being nice to me. Yeah, you know, we have that problem. It's very prevalent here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And so what are the highest states for human sex trafficking? Um, the highest ones actually are California, Florida, Texas. And what's great about us being, and why we're transitioning ourselves to Atlanta, because Atlanta is the number one hub where they're actually transported to other countries. That it happens right here in Atlanta. And the mayor of, of the Dunwoody, uh, uh, Georgia, she's endorsing all of this and really getting behind the stopping the demand on human trafficking. So we're kind of excited about being here because I'd like to catch them before they get them out of this country. Because once they get out of this country, you know, it's just a sad situation. It's a it's a it's a vicious cycle. And, it, you know, like Mother, Mother Teresa is one of another admirer of mine. She always said, you can't help, you can't do everything, but you can do something. And that's my attitude. And that's my husband's attitude. Yes, I can's attitude for being in Atlanta. We can do something. You can help somebody. Help somebody. Possibly be, I mean, because if I was human trafficking at 15, because at, at 16, if, you know how we were when we were like 13 and 12. So innocent. You don't know. They're very easily abducted by these criminals. And these they beat them, they they abuse them, 
They use them. They do everything. It's crazy, crazy. One of the other young ladies, um, her daughter was abducted, and they they found her in a ditch with human bi uh, bites all over her body, that totally nude, dead. That that was when I was I went to Florida and I sang for this event. And when I was in the green room, I'm looking at the screen and the other speakers who are uh, families and mothers and parents who have been involved with that human trafficking. They she shared that story. And I could only, I could barely hold back the tears preparing for my next song in the green room to come back out to perform. Well, we are going to take our Sister Power viewers and we are going to play your song, <laughs> I Believe. We're going to just put it on a good note here. I On behalf of Think Tell Kavai'i and Sister Power, Gail Moore, thank you. Mahalo Nui Loa. Thank you so much for your wisdom and giving back. I'm thank your host. You. Go ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, this has just been awesome. I really appreciate it. Really. Sister Power got it going on. All right. I'm your host, Sharon <laughs> Thomas Yarbrough. This is Sister Power. Aloha. Thank you.